Hello everyone, BA here. I know it's been a while since I uh, had any videos out and this isn't really a bike video. This is just another video uh, where I'm trying to save myself some money. We're going to be switching out and rebuilding a lifting cylinder on a Bobcat 743 today. We've kind of already got it prepped out on the cylinder. We have the bucket lifted up and we pulled out 9 sixteenths bolt, took the pin out, and dropped the cylinder down. The cylinder's bleeding inside, so it's not getting the, the full amount that we need the pressure. Once we have it down, there's a special tool that Bobcat has that takes the tops off. Here's a special tool that we have that also takes the top off. This is a steel cylinder and this is an aluminum cap, so be a little careful when you start twisting on it. It's still connected in the back. The back pin is still in, so the cylinder will not spin. So what we'll do is we're going uh, to loosen this cap. There it goes. And this aluminum cap will unscrew it. and then we'll be able to take the cylinder out. Normally I unhook the hydraulic line, so I'm gonna to try to do it without un unhooking the hydraulic line today, and we'll see how that works out. So we'll pause it, and hopefully when we get it out, we'll have this out and exposed. Okay, so we got this unthreaded. We made little dams on each side, that way we can catch all the hydraulic fluid that's gonna be running out, and it's still going to get a little messy, but hopefully we caught as much as we could. Now we're going to be pulling this plunger out. And as easy as it's coming out, I can tell that the plunger at the end, the seals are worn out because it should have, you should have a little uh, friction coming this bring this out oh and there's a the problem so there should be a nut and plunger on there so a nut and plunger has come off inside the the cylinder so we're going to fish that out that may be the main problem we have here we may not have to put new seals on this at all uh, this nut apparently has come off this is a spacer and it's stuck on there, we'll have to free that up. But there should be a plunger and nut. So we're gonna pause it. We're gonna see if we can fish this thing out of there and maybe we can get the pieces put back together. And now it's probably gonna solve a reason problem why we don't have any power in this uh, lifting arm. All right, so we went ahead and fished out this piece and this nut out of the cylinder. We left the cylinder connected, hydraulic cables are connected. Uh, we just undid one side, used a piece of rebar to kind of grab this and drag it out. <clears throat> this nut came off, allowing this to come off, and you can kind of see how it kind of got beat up with the piston, and the cylinder's going back and forth, and this piston's going back and forth. And then the spacer was stuck right here, so we got to kind of just tap the spacer off, and it'll go back on here. So now that we have it all apart, Problem was this nut came loose, that's why we lost the power in the cylinder. But while we have it apart, we have a cylinder um, seal kit. So these things are $16, I got this off Amazon. So while it's all apart, it's worth going ahead and replacing all these seals. So what we're gonna do is, you can just use this have a little hook tool, get most of the stuff at Harbor Freight, and we'll hook these. Get these out, and once you take one out, there'll be a O-ring under it, um, and then you'll replace it with a new one. So what I just do is I kind of start on one side and work my way back. Um, so we'll pause it, and I'll pull some of these off, and then we'll go over putting some of these on. There's a trick to putting one of these internal uh, seals back in. Okay, so we got this apart. Here's the old rings and seals. Pulled those out just using a little pick and a, a little hook and if you need to you can also slice it just a little bit with the your razor knife 
and then make it easier to come out. Uh, this one on the end, you have them here, but you also have one here on the edge, which is the external seal. On, I don't know these names. I, I'm not a mechanic. And then you have an internal one. An internal one's pretty difficult to put in. So we'll get the other ones put in, and then we'll we'll mess with this internal one. Um, we'll sh I'll show you how you can get that snapped in. I'm sure Bobcat has some type of special tool, um, but we don't have a special tool because we're cheap. Okay, so on as far as getting these O-rings back in, kind of just get them in the groove. And it's a little greasy, a little slick. I normally don't work with gloves on. I'm trying to keep my hands relatively clean because I might have to take my gloves off because my hands are slick. Hold on. around all right so we got one o-ring right there in that and then this one also gets a, a yellow spacer and I think I normally put this yellow spacer in first but I don't know if it makes much difference so I'm sure on the the comments will tell me. And try to get this over. Okay. There, I have to pause it and we'll get this one on so I have a little more freedom here in my hands. Alright, so this is going to be this internal seal that we took out. This is, uh, where's that? Uh, yeah, this is a blue one right here that we took out. And, uh, it's really, it's really rigid, and you have to get it inside of there. There's a, let me see where my pinky is. There's a deep channel that sits. So I found it works best. I get some needle nose pliers. I get a zip tie, and hopefully I'll try to, things are a little difficult when you're trying to film it. Uh, but I'm trying to zip tie it. In the middle tight so that you can now flip it over and make a smiley face to get it set in here and before we do that I just want to clean this out get out any debris that may be in that channel and now I'm gonna Once you get it in and you get it hooked into those hooks, then in the grooves, it's going to pop out, I'm sure, a couple times. Yeah. Um, then you cut the zip tie and you pull it out. I'm going to rotate a little. Um, I'm sure maybe someone has a better way to do this, and there's probably some special tool as usual with all this stuff. But. We will, this works pretty good. So we're going to pause it. Once I get stuck in there, then we'll come back and I'll show you how we just clip the zip tie. Yeah. Okay, so it took like three minutes. And basically, we got it stuck in its groove over here, over here. The zip tie is still on and it's kind of curved up. So hopefully, I'm going to try to clip the knot of the zip tie. Don't want to clip any part of that ring or seal. And then we can start working it and extending it back into its groove inside the channel. So let me get this out of first. And make sure not to clip the seal. Of 
course, this is just the world's strongest zip tie. There it goes. Okay, so zip tie is undone. And then I kind of need to get the zip tie out. Usually it just slides out. Kind of keep your thumb on it. The light's probably not that good. And as soon as I took that out, now that side clipped in. So now we're going to use our thumb. And now we just need to trick the rest of this. Boom. So took the zip tie out. And once I took it out, the back side clipped in. And then you just take that internal fold and push it, and it'll fill in. So now we got this internal seal put in. And that's really the hardest seal out of this whole job to get put in. Um, so let's see. So we just got now, we just have this seal to put out here, which is this uh, blue one. And then we got these two O rings to put on over here. Scoot it over. And also gonna have a fat O ring. Work it over there. So we got two new rings on there. This one, the I don't know what's that the flap that sticks out, it's gonna go toward the outside. So that's just gonna we're going to fit that in there and take this little squeeze in. And it has a little groove that sits in. And that all set in. So that's all set in. This is going to conform to the cylinder. And we have one. When we took it off, I noticed this O-ring wasn't even on. This O-ring is going to go... this right here at the base I'll work it down I already wiped and cleaned all this off that goes there and then we have one last o-ring that uh, that I'm pretty sure goes up here I just don't know where else it would go but Seems like you should have one sitting up here on top of this cap. And work it down. Bam. All right. So here's all the old stuff we took off. Old nut, that kind of new nut. This, that. Spacer goes in between. Like this and like this. So now we're ready just to uh, get this all put back on. So you just kind of have to work. Sometimes you got to turn it up. This actually has a little bend. It's just making it a little difficult. Must have been. It's been bent in the bag. So we'll pause it. I gotta get this little bend. It's right here. It's gonna defect. And I'll get it over here and then we'll side it all together and we'll show it to it all together. Alright, so we had a little hiccup. When this nut over here came loose, and then this was loose all in a cylinder um, it was going bouncing around the other cylinders working fine so it's still using machine so what happened was it, it knocked out all these threads on the end of this uh of this uh piston rod <clears throat> so just had to go and let's see ooh, ooh, it's still hot it's still hot it's cut off um 
at a quarter inch. There's still enough to put the nut back on. And now I can th thread that nut, this nut back on. So this goes on like this, just slides on. This also got marred up. Oh, I'm dropping it. I lost my camera, man. Okay, so this sleeve, the spacer, also got real marred up, so it was stuck on here. So I had to get a round file and uh, clean the inside of that so that this moves up nice and uh, nice and easy. So if I can pick up this, got the O-ring here. Get that back on, and then the nut. And I will be putting some Loctite on this nut. So we'll get that back together, and then we'll slide it into the piston. Now when you're sliding into the piston, you'll see, let me see if I can get the focus. Focus, there it is. This kind of moves, it's real, it moves, it's, it sticks out a little bit right there. So you may have to tap it in to get it, because this is supposed to be, it's gonna be real snug inside that piston, inside the cylinder. Um, so you'll have to, might have to tap it in just a little bit, but it'll go in. And once we get it in, we'll screw it back together and hopefully get things started and then uh, just bleed out. Oh yeah, let me pause this. Let me get this back together because my cameraman is gone. Okay. So we got it back together. Um, this was just a little more complicated than switching out the seals because of that nut that was uh, that rounded off the threads. But like I said, we cut the tip of the threads off. And... Putting this back on, you get a little pressure. You can't really push the cylinder in. So I just get a tie down strap, hook it in the back on top, and hook it down. You can't really see it down below, back here. Kind of keep it in line and loop it around the end where the eye is, on the outside of the eye. Crank it down, pull it in. Yeah, I know this probably isn't that safe, but. Um, I did crack this uh, valve down here and I have the valve open in the pedal and crank it in enough where you can get it back up, put your pin in, and then now all I gotta do is release the tension on the on the line, on the, the heck is this thing called, I'm tired. Ratchet strap, put my, tighten my hydraulic line on the top up here, behind there, T tighten that one up. I didn't mess with this one because it's a pain and I probably replaced the hoses at one point. So I will, even if I take this back pin out over here, it is very hard to get back here to, un, to loosen that one to normally take this whole thing out. So, you know, that's the way if you want to save yourself money driving a Bobcat or to the mechanic. I know Bobcat pays, I think they're charging like three something, 300 something dollars just to switch out these $16 parts. Um, you can do it. So, any tips? I love to have tips because this thing's a pain to work on. I love having, if anyone has any tips. Um, we use the rags to make a little dam so we we're able to catch all the hydraulic fluid so we didn't really make that much of a good mess. And we'll kind of get that recycled. So, I'm going to get this tailed back in, take it out, raise it up, lower it down a couple times, let it bleed the system out naturally, and uh, I'll be ready to get back to work. All right, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like these videos, let me know. I'll add more that are non-bike related. Uh, different pieces of machinery that I work here around the house. And uh, everyone take care and enjoy your day.